On this week's Talk With Him, we talk about the ongoing restoration, all the revelations we've already received and those we're still anticipating. That's right, and we'll look back to the day of Pentecost, and we'll talk about how each of us need to have our own flow of regular Pentecostal moments in order to maintain a firm spiritual foundation. All of that coming up. And welcome to Talk of Him. We're so grateful that you have joined us as we are moving through July. Yeah, we're doing it. It's our, our farewell tour. So we've got tour. four more, four yes. more episodes in July. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for being a part of, well, letting us be a part of your yes. journey spiritually. And you know, our audience is global. It's one of the things I've loved about this show is is the reach that has had beyond yeah. America. It is 4th of July in America this week, so happy, happy birthday, birthday, America. America. <laughs> but we, I have always been so proud that um, Good Pride, we talk about Good Pride, Bad Pride in our family. Yeah, yeah. So I've always been proud in like a joyful way that we have audience members in South America and Philippines and, yeah. and Ireland and Austria, shout out to Austria, Amy's yeah. sisters live in England and she was our original producer. Yeah, here. I'd love to shout out our, well, when I came on to the show, it was Amy and her daughter, Lauren. Lauren. Yeah, mm -hmm. just, just thank you so much to everybody who's, yeah. and uh, in, in recent months, uh, great, well, I guess Sweet Salt, whether you know it or not, has always been um, always. sponsoring Gainalyn's wardrobe. Yeah. And for me, it's been and collar. Right. This and, week is uh, all sweet salt. It's not always, but this week is yeah. full sweet salt. And I'm wearing an and collar. Yeah. This is their Atlas Polo. I love these things. <laughs> they just are I so think, breathable. I They're think awesome. I'm going to use your gift, yeah. your discount code yeah, for Yeah, and collar is shared with us um, a promo code that will be good even all the way through uh, September. Yeah. Uh, promo code talk of him. All caps, When we're one just word. still living in journal form. Yeah, 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 yeah right. Yeah. And uh, look at that for fifteen percent discount. Okay. So thank you to Ann Collar, to Sweet Salt, for all of our just all the support mm -hmm. all around the world. We're just so grateful this month of July. Yeah. So this week is Acts one through five, mm. and it is to me a great opportunity that I hope we can have a conversation around some specific interpretations of these verses. It may not be where you go. We've always felt like Talk right. of Him was about an invitation, a jumping off point. Right. The journal has some content that you can continue to use as you prepare for your Sunday school lessons or you listen to other podcasts or whatever, what interpretations you take. But this is in this week's um, entry, Acts 3, 20 through 21. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before you was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. When I read these verses, what really kind of like stood out and lit up for me is this understanding of a restoration or a restitution of all things. We talk a lot mm. about um, being the restored church. Right. And we talk, I think, very openly within our congregations about revelation and following a prophet. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for that. Uh, Sister Bingham, Jean B. Bingham said in 2018, what a wonderful blessing to live in a time of continual revelation from God as we look forward to and embrace the, the restitution of all things, which has and will come through the prophesied events of our time, we are being prepared for the Savior's second coming. A few weeks ago, we kind of like laid down the mic on yeah. the idea of that we should be joyful about yeah. the second coming of Christ, that yes. we don't need to have every box checked. But I love the idea of this is the ongoing restoration and that mm. we continually so so receive important. restitution um, of, of all things. And I don't know what that looks like, but one of the thoughts I had is that from Elijah's return to the modern translation of, of ancient scriptures to restore priesthood covenants, there are so many things that we've already received in this continuing restitution yeah. of all things. But there's still so much more to come. Well, we just, I, I, I just wish we would speak about the yeah. restoration more as an ongoing, and as President Nelson has put, a beginning, sort of really getting into right. it now. 
For too long we have talked about the restoration as though it's done, it happened, we've already got it all, we already know everything, we just have to share it with people, that's yes. our only... Yes. No, we've got to stay no. open to receive more. And I, and I would just want to acknowledge that for some of us, the revelation may feel like it's coming too fast. Mm, yeah, but for, for other sure. people, it's like way too slow. Like, why don't we Isn't have more understanding about this or this? <laughs> I just had a conversation. One of the great gifts um, is weekly phone calls with a missionary. Our our son went out years ago, and we didn't have that. And yeah. now we get to have Sister Condi conversations, That's and awesome. she asked us some questions about what we do and do not have on on some temple stuff. And I, I basically said to her, Sister Condi, like I I understand this, and we have this, but we don't have all of this. And so right. I think when we consider the fact that for those of us that may feel like the gaps are so like blinding at times, yeah. there are those that may feel like the season of restitution needs to maybe be put yeah. on hold. Or, or okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they're sense. just like change right. fatigued, much. right? Well, and to your point about the temple, I mean, how can I, how can I sit back and think that the restoration is static? And when I look at just what's happening the in the temple presentation mm -hmm. through modern day revelation, right. like it's dramatically it dramatic. changed since when I went through. So clearly there are some things that if I'm clinging too tightly to them, that might equal uh, maybe some faith crises in the future if well, I'm not willing to kind of reframe and rethink. And, and I want to share what my daughter taught us because there were other questions by other missionaries mm. similar to the vein of her questions. Yeah. And I said, did anyone answer? She said, I did. And I said, what was your answer? This is a shout out to my, my daughter's teaching. She said, I equated it to the gospels like a beautiful, complex, maybe thousand, two, 2,000 piece puzzle. Mm. And maybe there are pieces that we don't have yet that have missed, like we dropped them on the ground or we don't see them yet or whatever. Mm -hmm. She said, my invitation was don't stop putting the puzzle together. It's so beautiful. We have so much mm -hmm. because of the pieces that may be missing. And so I think there's a balance that we need to seek where we're asking for more in this in these verses and acts of restitution, but that we don't get stuck in only the asking and mm -hmm. we ignore all that we've already received because we have some amazing restored truths mm -hmm. that other faiths do not have. And they're, they're saving truths. They're life-saving truths, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally. And so I was just thinking, um, what are some of the revelations that have really blessed my life? And one of them is the phone calls. You know, yeah. my son went to Zimbabwe for two years. We had three huh. phone calls. And so it was interesting. Hard. We had a conversation the other day with some other missionaries and, and teenagers preparing. Like, well, why did it take so long? And my husband made the greatest point. He's like, listen, I served in Portugal. If I called home collect, it was $200 for 10 minutes. Mm. There was literally not technology. Yeah, good point. Good job, but, Rob. Good point. <laughs> Rob's like, but those that have been called mm. to American or, you know, right. local or, or domestic missions would have been able to call during the time. So first of all, the technology hadn't been invented. And now we have the technology and then it had to be globally available so that it was equitable, mm. right? Mm. And so I thought that was a really good insight that for all the parents that have gone through the not having phone calls. And now we're so grateful we have this opportunity because we, we get to experience her mission in a totally different way. Mm. Uh, the other thing I would just say from a really personal level, we've already talked about the presentation of the temple, but is Come Follow Me, the Come Follow Me program. You know, it's changed mm. my life forever because of the Come Follow Me program, we've done the show. Right. And I think the Come Follow Me program was announced and I don't think they love it being called a program, but the Come Follow Me initiative <laughs> Initiative before there was a global pandemic and we were all of a sudden at home and to our church. And like you can see where God was making sure that revelation came in time for certain things to happen yeah. so that we had that, that opportunity available when we needed it. And for those same missionaries that maybe during the pandemic had no access, were in countries mm -hmm. where it was so locked down, without those phone calls. right? They were sometimes in apartments. I know you had yeah, a missionary serving that it was just the people in your apartment that you saw and got yeah. to talk to. So to me, those are just recent examples, but There's what so a great many. time to, a week uh -huh. to have a conversation about all that we have been given. Even yeah. if you're struggling with the gaps of what you're still praying for, or wanting, wanting to understand better, yeah. or hoping that revelation will come for, don't overlook 
what what we have been given. And rest in the assurance that clarity is coming. Yes. That's the promise. And I asked you in our prep, like, what are the rest revelations and restorations that you, and, and it was that point of it's ongoing. And I think in the 80s and maybe even in the 90s, yeah. we made it seem as if we have it all. That's how I felt growing it, it up. It felt I'm, like that. Wh whether or not, I mean, you know, perception is reality. Right, right. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't want to like, you know, blame anyone for teaching me a certain way or anything like that. But I mean, just like that was my feeling growing up is that, oh, we're done. We already have it all. We know everything. Our only job is to invite others to come and experience it with us. I didn't have, uh, sort of even as a missionary, I don't think I had the openness. The perception. Yeah, that I have today. And so thanks to our living prophets and apostles. Right. I think the message is super clear right not now. Not the restoration, but the ongoing. ongoing. And take your vitamins. Yes. Yeah. I love it so much. I want to go to Acts chapter one and add to Great. this here. Um, we, we've referenced some of this before and I, I want to add a couple, uh, another layer to it, but this is uh, Acts chapter one when, when the apostles are all sitting around. Jesus has been resurrected. He's been with them now for 40 days. You just think about what that means to have been hanging out with Jesus for 40 days after his resurrection. What that must have been like, all the Where things the he would have Where the scars are yes. still visible. <laughs> you wake up each day and you're like, was that a dream yesterday? And you, you walk know, in the other room, yeah. nope, there he is. And He's the scars back. were there. It's like, <laughs> like let's not be confused yes. that I am the living Christ, right? So in Acts 1, 3 and 4, um, to whom also, meaning his apostles, he showed himself after his passion by many infallible proofs. We referenced that phrase last week being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being to get, assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart Jerusalem yet. Because they're super excited to get out there and share this message. But he's like, you can't, you have to wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. In other words, like, so they had not received the Holy Ghost yet. Um, and Jesus is like, you can't be a witness for me yet. I can just see Peter, especially. Right? Confused. Just like, what do you mean? I've been with you your entire ministry. I saw you die. I've been hanging out with you for 40 days resurrected. I think I'm good to be a witness. And Jesus is like, no. Not yet. No. You, you genuinely, like, literally cannot witness for me yet until you receive one more really important thing. I just love the phrase infallible proofs. And before we move on from that, I want people just to think about what infallible proofs do you feel like you've received in your life or experienced, you know, that let you know that Jesus is real. Um, Acts 1, 5 and 8, Jesus says, John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Then you'll receive power after that you receive the Holy Ghost and you'll be a witness. You'll be able to witness for me. They needed that experience, that baptism by fire, and then they could be witnesses. And I just thought to myself, that's true for all of us. Until we have that baptism by fire moment, I'm just not sure we can carry the power of a witness that God really intends us to bring when we testify of the Savior. Didn't we talk about that in June? Yeah. When there was this confusion about like Christ couldn't be in right, the presence right, 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 of the right, Holy right. Ghost and we talked about the Godhead and sure. it was like we talked about the fact that there was a more complete witness yeah. with the gift of yeah, the Spirit. Yeah, that, that sixth sense kind of thing. And so speaking of the day of Pentecost, right? right. Acts chapter two. Uh, so they're all gathered around. They're still waiting for this promise, this baptismal by fire moment. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse four of chapter two. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse six, now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Man, that's an important phrase. So important. Verse 11. They said, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. The principle being that the Spirit speaks my language. I think that's so important because yeah. I think in addition to have I been forgiven mm -hmm. of sins mm -hmm. that we talked about last week, right. I would say top second question I hear most often right. is, is it God or is it me? Right. Is it God or is it right. me? And oftentimes I will tell people if I'm in an opportunity to teach, 
Of course it's going to sound familiar because God's going to talk to you in a way that's your language. Right. We've, so, we've yeah. said this before with like, so in Doctrine and Covenants section one, right. God says, I'm going to speak to my prophet, my apostles, my witnesses in, his, in, their, language, in their language so they can understand. Right. And so we, we've likened it to, as an example, uh, he's going to speak to Elder Uchtdorf perhaps with through a German an, accent. A, <laughs> okay, okay. I was thinking more with, sure, but also an aviation like metaphor oh, yes, right. to help him understand it <laughs> in a German accent. But he would speak in German. He would. I mean, I mean, Elder Uchtdorf said that is the celestial language. Yeah, that's debatable, but you know. No, but he'll speak in your language in a way that you understand. I don't want to overstep, though, the fact that obviously there's a litmus test. Does it lead you to good? Sure, sure, Is sure, it yeah. edifying? All the tests that we receive yep. in the scriptures of like, is this from God? But so often I think like, of course the language yep. feels familiar. And of course it almost may feel as if you're speaking to yourself because well, and, God's and, like wanting it to not be jarring. He wants you to know it's him. I would even say, I would even add to that, that by speaking our language, it just speaks to the soul mm. in a way that is undeniable. And so that's what was happening here. And that's what's happened to me. So John and Peter, Peter and John specifically, they've received this, okay, now it's like, okay, they have all this physical evidence right. from the 40 days, so the whole ministry of Jesus, three years, plus the 40 days of his resurrected you know, being with them. And now they have this. And so they just go out and they're just, they're powerhouses now. They're powerhouses. And the, the, the Jewish leaders get mad. They, they call him in and they're like, you stop preaching Jesus. Do not preach him anymore. And I love this. Their response. <laughs> <laughs> they said. They were super calm about uh, it. <laughs> what's, what, whether it be right in the sight of God. So it's like, oh, what do you think? What do you think God prefers, brethren, uh, that we should hearken to him or to you? You be the judge of that. And then they say, we cannot speak but the things which we have seen and heard. Like, we can't help it. They can't deny it. We can't. Look, you're asking me to deny, you're asking me to deny reality. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is what I think. Each of us has to have these Pentecostal type moments with truth, with God, with different aspects of the restoration. I would say I have had, I have not had, I have not had Pentecostal moments with every aspect of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. I just haven't. I'm still working on Your daily acquiring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I have had Pentecostal moments confirming the Book of Mormon, mm -hmm. the Joseph Smith first vision experience, the reality of God using living prophets and apostles to push the work forward. Little th big things, I would say, like that. Recently, I've had uh, the opportunity to have conversations with people that are of different beliefs than me. And um, recently I was asked, like, how can you believe that stuff about specifically Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon? Because they had, you know, been exposed to a lot of anti stuff. And, and I almost. And some trauma. Yeah, yeah, for Religious sure. And they, they've had some trauma with the church. And, you know, I understand that. And I'm uh, empathetic mm -hmm. to that. But. I almost said sort of apologetically, but matter of factly, like, I'm, I'm sorry, man. Like, I have had experiences. Just like the apostles. Yeah. That I, I, I have to tell you what I believe is true based on, I'm just trying to live in reality, man, just like you. I'm just trying to live in reality and live true to the experiences I've had. And I, I can't deny these experiences. They, they are of a nature that is so impactful and transformative and undeniable that I would just be being disingenuous if I sat here and, and pretended I didn't have them mm -hmm. or pretended I was still in a space of doubt because I'm just not. Mm -hmm. And I'm still always reprocessing things that have happened to me through faith and through the spirit. But man, I that's what I believe based on my experiences. Shouldn't I be trying to live authentically according to my experiences? He was very respectful. He said, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to do the same. I was like, there we go. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And so I hope that to each of us, we will add whatever infallible proofs we think we have about, you know, this church and God and Jesus and Joseph Smith and scriptures. I hope that we will add the baptism of fire, have our own Pentecostal moment about every aspect of the ongoing restoration. Can I share a thought that just happened as you were talking? Because yeah. originally I'm like, of course the spirit is going to sound familiar in our own language, but I just had the awareness. 
God knows what resonates with me. Yeah. He knows what comforts me. He knows what teaches me. And just in the last few weeks, as I have known about the show ending, mm. um, it's been emotional. Yeah. I, you know, I just sent a daughter out on a mission and there's just been a lot of endings. Yeah. And he has made sure, because he knows one of my love languages yeah. and the way I learn by the spirit is through my trusted faith friends. And so at times when I haven't known what he was going to say to me because right. maybe the grief was so mm -hmm. heavy, he's made sure he's told other people. That's your language. And he knows I trust them. And those individuals didn't always even know the context. Right. So I just had a conversation on Sunday where uh, one of these faith friends just said, I don't, you stood up to give the prayer and sacrament meeting. And this is what God just said to me. I don't know why. Well, I knew exactly why. Yeah. And so I just wanted Beautiful. to invite our audience to consider those Pentecostal moments. Maybe that God reaches you because you resonate with music, like we mm. talked about yeah, yeah, last yeah. week. Or, you know, with your family. Or because you're out in nature. And mm -hmm. that's where he knows you're going to be able right. to hear him better. Yes. I think those Pentecostal moments may not be a rushing Right. Of, of waters, so mm. to speak. For my son, it was joy. Mm. And he had to go on the mission to realize, oh, the Spirit talks to me with joy. And so when I'm in that joyful space, that's when I'm very vertically connected, as you awesome. taught. So that was just Love an so insight I, no, thank that you, I had. Well, ready for an invitation? Yes, let's do it. All right. It. For our invitation this week, we want you to start with the first vision. And so, so this is a sort of the first event that sparked the ongoing restoration and go from there. And we invite you to look up, uh, there's a beautiful article on the church's website. And it's linked in our oh, Find in our, Him our, journal. Oh, oh, right, in our Find Him journal, there's a link for it, where it goes through all the changes and additions and things like that that have happened in the church since President Nelson was called as the prophet. We ask you to look at those, check those out, and then note any additional revelations given in the years since 2020 when that list was made and uh, just consider, get into this, this groove of the ongoing rev, uh, restoration and, and uh, get excited about what's to come. And then we just invite you to pray in faith and ask God to give you a witness, a Pentecostal moment, if you will, that uh, this restoration is indeed ongoing and it's true and of Him. We can testify from our own experiences that as you throw yourself out there into the arms of the Savior in faith, He'll catch you and give you the proof you're looking for. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you again next week on Talk of Him. Talk of Him is brought to you by Covenant Communications. Make sure you follow us on social media and pick up a copy of Find Him Study Guide at Siegel Book or online. 